The 9070 XT really is an impressive card by AMD. It performs insanely well. It can compete with Nvidia's offerings that are much more expensive at an MSRP of 599, if you can get one. Now, there is one glaring issue that I have with this, minus the whole stock issue, and that is the hotspot temperatures. AMD is actually allowing these cards to have insanely high hotspot deltas. What does that mean? So typically in your typical monitoring software, you'll see GPU core temps at like 40, 50 degrees, and you're thinking, perfect. But there's also the hotspot, which is the hottest part on the GPU die itself, and that was running at about 40 degrees higher. This is generally unacceptable, and this can definitely negatively affect the lifespan of the card, or just the overclocking potential, because as temperatures increase, the actual voltage requirements do get more difficult on a overclock. So if you're able to fix the hotspot, you actually might be able to get a little bit more performance out of this card. Now, some worries that I do have already about this is the fact that this is actually an issue on every single 9070 XT model. This is not just a specific Tai Chi issue. This is not a specific Sapphire issue. This is every single 9070 XT. And as a lot of people commented on a TikTok that I posted a couple of weeks ago, where I was telling people about this issue, they said, it's in spec. Yeah, 100% it's in spec, but just because your VRAM on a 3090 was 110C and that's in spec, that doesn't mean that you feel comfortable and actually wanna do that. Kudos to AMD though, they did actually give us a hotspot readout, unlike Nvidia on the RX, RTX 50 series. How are we going to fix this graphics card and how are we going to potentially get rid of this hotspot issue? Well, the most obvious thing for me is just change the thermal face on the card. A lot of times manufacturers will not use very good thermal face. They'll use the cheapest stuff they can. They want to make more margins. So if they can save two pennies and instead of going for a higher quality thermal face, go for something that will probably like be fine for most people, that's what they're going to do. Except a lot of manufacturers have actually started switching to phase change thermal pads, something like a PTM 7950 by Honeywell. This actually is not as good in the short term for temperatures, but in the long run, it has much better longevity and is just what I found to be the better option. It's actually what my RTX 4090 uses when I replaced it actually, and I got massive temperature improvement. I'll leave an affiliate link down below for that because I would highly recommend PTM 7950 on every GPU. Sadly, I do not have any PTM 7950 currently, and just for the points of this video, it will not matter as much, and it's more about just is anything like this going to fix it? We will be replacing the stock thermal paste with Kingpin KPX. I have the big tube, I use so much of this, so it's literally my favorite thermal paste. It's been what I've been using for the past three years at least, and it's also what I recommend to every single client. Let's get into it and let's actually see if we can fix the 9070 XT. Okay, here we have the 9070 XT finally installed. As you can see, like temperatures are perfectly fine just sitting at the desktop. 3C delta, that's fine. Obviously, it's 3C, that's fine. I did max out the power limit. This is how I run my fans on this card. That's actually how I did it for the review as well. 2700 megahertz on the memory, fast timings, negative 80 millivolts on the offset. That was the most I could do and it be stable in every benchmark. But what we are going to be running is we're going to be running Steel Nomad. This was just a little test I was doing. This is the overlay we'll be looking at. This is built into AMD. So like I have the, like, the full driver installed. So performance is probably not the best, but um, I'm gonna run it again. And we're gonna start looking at the hotspot temps. Okay, so here we are running Steel Nomad and look, almost instantly we're getting about a 30 C Delta with it quickly, quickly climbing up till 40 C. We're running a little under 3.1 gigahertz hitting that 375 watt power limit. This does say a lot, as well as at 1140, 1200 RPM. Um, as you can see, look at that hotspot hit almost 80. GPU temp at 40. Like if you were looking at GPU temp, you'd be like, oh, that's not bad. Like this GPU runs really cool. Till you see that hotspot. And obviously this is in spec, but like you gotta think this is not going to be healthy for the longevity of your card, as well as this is probably holding back some performance, allowing you not to undervolt as high. But let's wait to see what the final score is. Here we got a 7729, so we're above average. Not as good as the best. This is with like full driver installed, like Windows kind of chilling, 98, 950X3D, not fully tuned. So like obviously there is some improvements to be made, but just looking at this score, 7729. So let's see if when we tear this card apart, if we can actually get any improvements. 
or is the 9070 XT just kind of trash? Now, I'm not going to be doing a full teardown guide on this GPU just because I haven't tear torn it down myself. But what it really looks like is I have to take off all of these screws on top. Great. There's one under this sticker. Azrock, this is a real issue. I get you putting this tamper seal here, which is illegal. So, like, this is illegal in the U.S., so I might try and take it off. But having one underneath here as well, that's a real annoyance. So I think I might be able to lift this up. So we'll see. But... I have to take off all of these screws. There is one screw here on the side I need to, as well as on the other side. And then as well as, I'm going to need to have to unscrew this screw here and these two on the IO plate. I would complain about this, but I love having IO plates connected to the rest of the graphics card. This significantly helps the GPU sag. This GPU literally has no sag because of that. So good job on that engineering ASRock, but you lost a lot of points when you decide to put stickers under screws or above screws. But I'm gonna take it apart. I'll be back when I have the PCB free. Also, this card doesn't have PTM on it or like phase change thermal pads. That's why I'm okay with actually repasting the core. It's because this paste is probably garbage. Yeah, I tried to get this sticker off and it's just not going. Sadly, Azrock, I hate you, but yeah, we gotta do that. That's so stupid. Why, Azrock? Why? Hey, I'm Azrock. Let me put the serial number over a uh, in a barcode over a screw that someone's probably going to take apart. Me! Majorly disappointed in Azrock for that. Okay, so these are all the screws that you need to remove. You need to remove everything on the top. You do not actually have to remove these two on each side. And you just have to remove the two from the I.O. plate. These two are perfectly fine. So it really literally wasn't that many screws. I just organized them, so everything on the top and these two. Now all I have to do is remove the leaf spring here that has a warranty sticker. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Azrock. You like that? I know you do. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You'd still warranty the card. You legally have to. So joke's on you. If I mean, it's not like I'm going to break it. I'm not going to break it, guys. Trust. Leaf spring is off, and now also, this is good ASRock engineering. I'll, I'll give ASRock some credit where credit is due. They did put these very easily so I can remove them with my fingers. Probably need two hands, but I'm able to remove the RGB and the fan connectors very, very easily. So I'm going to do that and then take the card apart. So here is the GPU die, and this kind of does look like PTM to me. I don't know. Like it's, it kind of reminds me of what PTM should look like. It's very dry, that's kind of also why. But like, I don't know. I was told this wasn't phase change, but maybe it is. So I guess what we're gonna have to do here is, I mean, contact looks perfectly fine. I mean, yeah, we're gonna clean this off and I will replace it with KPX and we'll see how it performs. And if it performs very well, something you can't really see, but I'll circle it for you guys, there is a shunt resistor right there that's how they actually like take power of the uh, 12 volt high power now it's how they like power monitor if this runs well i could definitely sh shunt mod this and get a little bit more performance out of it maybe get it to like 400 watts 425 i do need to learn how to solder though and what shunt resistors to buy but that could be a fun little project now for my secret ingredient i will be using flitz polish on top of this just to kind of see if it is nickel or not but also this is just kind of how I'm going to see if this can help stick a little bit better, kind of polish the metal a little bit. But I did get it super clean, so look, there you are. Now, as you can see, you can actually pick it up on camera even better than I can see it in person almost. But you can see where I did put the flitz polish and how much like shinier it is. It polished it literally. So the dyes, so this is what I think is really going to help. It's kind of give it that bite a little bit more, allow it to actually make smoother contact. It doesn't like sand or anything, but it is like super duper shiny now, like wow. All right, now let's use my favorite thermal paste, Kingpin KPX, upside down, link down below, affiliate link. I literally get the big tube because this is the only thermal paste I will use. I'm going to spread some out and then manually spread it with the spatula. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is the only way you should be properly doing any sort of thermal paste, just to make sure you're getting proper contact, especially on a dye like this. IHS doesn't matter as much, but for a dye, direct dye, you need to.
Thermal paste is good enough. It'll spread out and this is gonna make a mess anyway, so I'll have to clean it up, which will be fun. But now let's get this back together onto this. I have to do this off camera because I don't have the camera set up. And just like that, it is all back together. Super duper easy. Even easier to put it back together than it was to tear it apart. Super easy deconstruction, just once again. Don't like these stickers as rock. Just get rid of them. I understand this one. Everyone has this one, but why are you putting one on those serial numbers? It's annoying. But yeah, let's plop this back in the machine. All right, so we're back in Windows. Look, everything looks perfectly fine. Hot spot. GPU time is about two degrees lower, which kind of makes sense. The phase change is really good for lasting a while, but temperatures actually are a little bit better on some of the paste that you can replace. But let's start running Steel Nomad. As you guys remember, we had a massive hot spot, probably about 40 degrees. So let's see what happens now. All right, the test just launched and yeah, man, ah. Uh... We're getting basically the exact same thing. We're getting about the same frequency, maybe a little bit higher, but like it's still climbing, still hitting that power limit. This is, uh, yeah, no, this is doing the exact same thing. Let's see if the score is any different though. So we did get a higher score of 7,777. Our previous score was 7,729. And if you're wondering how much faster that actually is, uh, yeah, we're half a percent faster. So awesome. I mean, I'm playing Black Ops 6 right now. And like, look, you're having a 30, 31C Delta. This is not okay. This is a real issue. And like, honestly, if it was just in benchmarks, that'd be one thing. But in games, imagine as it heats up like 83. Look, this is what I'm talking about. And this is only at 320 watts. Like, this is 4K, 240. But, like, come on. This is, uh, this is unacceptable. Let's talk about why this probably didn't work and what are future steps we could do. So, I, uh, think we have our answer here. This is kind of not really going to work. I did expect this actually to work, and I thought this might be a good answer. But, no. I mean, it looks like this thing was using phase change. Obviously, most of the time they're not using PTM 7950 because it is a little bit more expensive. They're using some like lower quality version of it. In the future, we have a couple of options on actually how we can move forward. And most simple option would just be a phase change thermal pad, like a PTM 7950. That would probably help a little bit, but I don't think that's going to be a real issue. I think the issue is actually in the die itself. Option two, which is a little bit risky, and I've actually done this before in an AMD GPU, so I don't really recommend it, but conduct a knot extreme. This is liquid metal. This will definitely lower the hotspot and have the absolute lowest hotspot you can get. But like a couple other things you could do is probably get different thermal pads and like maybe change the distance. But at the same time, it doesn't look like this card is having any contact issues, which is really why I'm confused. And I don't want to potentially mess up the cooling effect of the VRAM or the VRMs, or the MOSFETs, or any of that. Let me know down below in the comments what your guys' thoughts are, as well as if you guys want me to switch to this GPU for the next month. I don't really know if I'm going to keep it. I've gotten some offers to buy this card, so I'm just contemplating doing that. But hit that like button down below, subscribe, join the Discord, become a member in there. Super helpful. Allows me to continue purchasing hardware for the channel, and I'll see you guys later.